What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here tonight with the review for BET Presents The Encore Season 1 Episode 2. The episode is titled Time to Be Queen. And you guys, before we get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you're not already subscribed to the channel, why are we still going out on dates with each other and you not pay for my meal? Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell button, and let's go ahead without further ado, let's get into the review, shall we? All right, you guys, so before I get into this review, I do want to say something that I meant to say last week. So you guys, what I'm thinking about going forward, I might do lives at some point don't hold me to it, but I think we might do some lives. I think I might do a live like what um, what Misha does on Saturday when she talks about, you know, ready to love and when she was talking about married at first sight. So what I might do is I might do a Friday night live or a Saturday night live. I'm not, con I'm not 100% set on it just yet, but we might do a live where whatever shows we have, whatever reality shows we've reviewed throughout the week, we'll just discuss it in the live. And I might even let you guys, you know, come on camera and tell me what you guys thought about the episode. So like, for right, so if I were to do it this week, we would be discussing, and this is, and even if you guys don't watch the shows, you can, you know, we'll get in the comment section, you, you know, on the, in the live chat, you guys will talk about, if you don't watch the show, then you can talk about, you know, whatever show, is on us, you know, that we reviewed. So like how right now it would be, we would be talking about what Tuesdays, it's Real Housewives in New York City, Wednesday, Beverly Hills, the Encore, and then Thursday, Growing Up Hip Hop, Friday, which this Friday is like Love at the Lockup, um, Ready to Love, and then, you know, that would be it. And then I know in June, next month, the day after my birthday, we'll have um, so that might have to move. No, it won't. Because July 17th, which is the day after my birthday, um, Love and Mary Chunsville returns. So what we might do in that case is, so we'll do the Saturday night, Saturday night live, but it'll come after Love and Mary Chunsville. We, we, we won't discuss the, we won't discuss that week's episode. We'll discuss that previous week's episode. So that's how it'll work. So what we'll do is we'll go from the previous week to that Saturday, and that's where we'll that's where we'll stop at. And let me know if you guys like that. So in July it would be you know Real Housewives of Potomac up until so actually it would start with Love and Mary Chunksville that so like the week of the seventeenth we wouldn't discuss it. We would discuss it the following Saturday. I hope I'm making sense to you guys, but. Without further ado, you guys, let's go ahead and get into the review, shall we? But like I said, you guys, let me know what you guys think about that. All right, you guys, so this episode, Aubrey, she still feels the same way she felt about that whole divisive comment. Girl, you were being divisive. Like, just accept it. Accept it. Accept it. Um, so then Keely tells Shamari what happened with she and Aubrey. You know, I was watching today. I was looking at the video for Danny D. Kane, um, Showstopper, and what's the other one that they got? Damaged. Aubrey's body and face. I might put a picture of Aubrey somewhere because I did take a screenshot of it. You might see a picture of Aubrey somewhere on the screen. But in, in this, when I was looking, I'm like, she was looking like, I mean, she looked stuffed and looked like she didn't have no neck when she was talking to the cameras. And then, please, Aubrey, go up in the next size. So, Sita comes onto the television screen and tells the ladies that they need a queen who will have the final say. So, the way that this will work is the ladies will vote on the queen. And the queen can't be voted out until the new queen is crowned. So we see the ladies and they go into, and this gives me a very much Big Brother feel. Um, if you guys are not familiar with Big Brother, the house guests, they, you know, they play for safety each week. It's a competition called the Head of Household. The Head of Household will nominate two people for eviction. And then those two people, they're on the block. And then 
they'll play for the veto competition, which one of them can take themselves off the block or someone else could take. It just gives me that vibe just a little bit. So, for the twins are talking about that they, one of the twins said that they were millionaires. Those wigs say otherwise, especially, I think it might be Fallon. No, it's Felicia. Or is it Fallon? One of their wigs is humped up like this. It's humped. I'm like, just pat it down. Oh, that was something else I wanted to mention. So, Carlos King, because I know you, I know you like my, you know, tweets about my reviews for Love and Mary Chanceville and Bell Collective. If you're watching this, if we get a season two, please give us luggage, aka Farrah from Destiny's Child. That's all I need. So, we see the ladies and they're doing their votes. The fact that Keeley voted for herself, the narcissism, <laughs> the narcissism with that one. Girl, you voted for yourself? Okay. So, the votes went as followed. And I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm going to tell you. They, people, someone, two people voted for Aubrey. I think one person voted for Fallon. I think one person voted for Felicia. Of course, Keeley voted for herself. And then Pam, she got... At one point, she and um, she and Aubrey were tied, but somebody broke the tie, and Pam ended up being, you know, the queen for this week, giving all types of stud realness. Just saying. So it was at this point that I realized, because Pam had this binder where she was reading out of it, what you know, what things that they're supposed to do. So. The one thing that caught my attention is the fact that they are supposed to do. So all nine of them are supposed to be on three songs together. Ew. Like, how is that going to work? Like, how is that going to work? So I, I, I guess what they'll do is have one person sing lead. But who would you have sing lead in this group of women? Who would you have singing lead is the question. So, Shamari, we know she can sing, but Shamari does a little bit. She does too much. She, I will say that Shamari does too much. Aubrey, she she does all those runs, and it's just like, girl, kill it. Nivea, she, you know what I would actually, if I were to pick and say who would sing lead on any of the songs, I guess I would go with Nivea. I guess, like, let's think about Destiny's Child. Beyonce and Kelly were the two leads, you know, the, the oh, oh, that video of Kelly when she said she was a second lead and Beyonce looked at her. <laughs> oh my God, I can't get over that. So, but when you, I mean, when you listen to Destiny's Child, Beyonce always starts that out first. Kelly comes in and then you got the, you got the end with Michelle with a few lines especially speaking like talking like cater to you like people are upset about cater to you but that's neither here nor there so yeah i'm like that's gonna be a shit show but let's move on oh my god pam pam is gonna work my nerves i can tell you that right now so it's the next morning and nivia's talking to pam i'm like girl i would not talk to pam in the morning because if you go to pam i feel like if you go up to pam and be like hey pam can i have a waffle Yes, you can have a waffle that Jesus put on this table. Pam, I just asked for a waffle. In Jesus' name, he says it so. Pam, I just asked for a waffle. But Jesus is our salvation. He made a way for us to have that waffle. Pam, I just want a waffle. I love the Lord too. I just want a waffle. In Jesus' name, I pray. Pam, I want a waffle. Can I have the waffle, boo? I didn't ask you about Jesus. I didn't ask you about God. Can I have a waffle? Like, that's how I feel about Pam. Like, she gonna bring the, the good Lord. He made a way for somebody to prepare that food to nourish your belly. Pam, give me the damn waffle. Like, I just feel like that's where we would, we would be going, Pam. Um... So then Pam has them going into the studio and working, they're working on a reggae song. I was like, oh God, no. 
none of these women are ranking artists and they all sounded bad not bad in the sense of they didn't sound good it was just like reggae is not for any of them that i will say the one person who threw me for a loop and sounded ridiculous aubrey o'day <laughs> and you know the crazy thing is with aubrey i was i loved aubrey from day um from from the beginning from when i first met her on um season three of making the band i knew aubrey was gonna be it from the begin from the first time that i saw aubrey on making the band now i didn't know about andrea but making a band three, Aubrey was my girl the entire season. And, you know, she she went back and forth for Puff. Puff actually fucked over Danny DeCane. Because, I mean, that second album, Welcome to the Dollhouse, that was a solid album. That album was solid. Did Donnie ever make an album? Did Donnie ever? I think Donnie made an album. And I believe. Day 26. Now, I never, I watched their season of making a band, but I didn't get into Day 26. I mean, they thought too much. And it was always, and then Q was so needy and a crybaby. But yeah, you know what? Yeah, like I said, Diddy fucked over Danny and he came more so because he was grooming Don to be a solo artist, which She's a solo artist, but I don't know what her career is. You know, Don doesn't look the same these days either. Um, yeah. So, like I said, they were all doing the reggae song. Child Shamari. What you will never do is disrespect my boo, my baby, Tony Braxton. You know goddamn well that twin did not sound nothing like a Tony Braxton. Girl, get off of the gas. Irish and Lamisha. Okay, we had a conversation about this in the chat, in the um, comments about uh, 702. You guys, I love 702. I do. That was my group. Y'all want to know one of my favorite songs? No. Yeah, 702. One of my favorite songs by 702 is I Still Love You. Like, that is my song. I love that song. <clears throat> 702, I Still Love You. That is my shit. That is my shit. Like, I will wear that song out. Why was I thinking of kissing you? That's total. But it's 702 that I'm talking about. But yeah, I love, I still love you. But we, y'all, we got to call a spade a spade. Irish and Lamisha. You know what? When it comes to Irish and Lamisha, I'm not going to say that they... How can I say this? It's not that you... They can't sing, but I think what it is with I, <laughs> I think what it is with Iris and Lamisha is maybe they haven't sang in so long, and their voices are rusty. I'm gonna give them that. Now here's my thing with the twins. The twins are really effing annoying. So I don't know if that was Fallon or if, I think it was Fallon. Now I, I give it, I get it. You giving Lam um, Iris some pointers about stop singing through her nose and singing through her stomach and stuff like that. But girl, you acting like you Mariah Carey or Whitney Houston. Sit down, cause your voice ain't up to par either. Like you know, I was thinking last week. I, I thought, like I thought I had Cherish's first album. I guess I didn't. I had this group called ISIS. Who the hell is it? Who the hell is ISIS? I'm still trying to figure out who Isis is. I don't even know what they single is because I found some of my old CDs and I saw this red CD because I, I, I kept picturing this red CD in my head and I'm like, that's Cherish's first album. But it wasn't Cherish, it was Isis. Again, I don't know who Isis is. I mean, I guess teenage JB knew who Isis was, but 32-year-old JB has no idea who the fuck that is. <laughs> Just saying. So, you guys, I also want to tell you guys this last week as well about Cherish. I actually saw Cherish in concert. So, when I was in junior college, I went to this school called TJC. It's in my hometown of Tyler, Texas. So, it stands for Tyler Junior College. So, we had a little concert. And Cherish was the... Child, the funny thing was, Cherish was the headliner. They were the headliner. And they were head... Actually... It was two headliners. It was them and it was Jock. 
and it was somebody else. I can't remember who the third, it was three people, but I can't remember who the third person was. But I know they were all from Georgia, that I do know, because we had a good time with Jock, and we had a, and we had a good time with Cherish. But child, I just thought about it. What songs did they perform? The only song that they performed that we knew was Do It To It and Unappreciated. And that was it. They did some old songs, but like I said, I thought I had the album, but I guess I didn't, and I, I guess I didn't know their songs. So, now, y'all, I was just talking about um, Isis and Lamisha. Who told Keely to get her low, no singing ass on that track? First of all, I thought Keely was supposed to be the creative director. Keely don't know what she wants to be. We're going to talk about that in a little bit as well. But let's move on. Child, we got to talk about Pam again. Given what? Stud realness. These are jokes, by the way. So, they sitting in, they sitting and you know, Ebony, child, I was about to say Ebony, like Real Housewives of New York, Aubrey, Aubrey had her arm, you know, on um, Pam, and she was rubbing Pam's leg. Nothing sexual or suggestive. But Pam was like, whoa, we can't do that. We can't do that because uh, people will get the wrong impression. Girl, we already had that impression. <clears throat> We've all had that impression that you were what? A lesbian. Girl, you, you exude. You exude it. You ooze. Lesbian. Say it with me. Lesbian. Say it with me, Pam. You're a lesbian. But no, Pam is like Andrew Caldwell. She's been delivered. I was like, oh my God. First of all, Pam, I don't think Aubrey would want you. Not being funny. I just don't think she wants you. You ain't her type. You not, you know who Junior. You're not a married man. Oops, did I say that? My bad. <clears throat> <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. What did she see in him? What did Aubrey see in you know who Junior? Ugh. Got that. That is Okay, never mind. So yeah, Pam girl, miss me with the BS. We know you a lesbian. You know you a lesbian. Only thing that you doing is managing to suppress your feelings. What is it with people that's suppressing it? Donnie McClurkin. Pam, like why y'all suppressing who y'all are? Like I agree, you know, and the funny thing is I don't like Keely. I don't like Keely one bit, but I find myself agreeing with Keely. Ugh. So Keely said that you can't pray the gay away. Amen. I don't know. I mean, you are who you are. You. I mean, I mean, if it was that easy, I think a lot of people that are gay, bisexual, lesbian, tr you know, trans, whatever. Anybody in the LGBT community, I'm pretty positive if you could pray that away and it goes away, they would have done it by now, but it's not the case. I mean, again, we're in Pride, hell, we in Pride Month. Girl, 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 girl. So Pam goes upstairs and she tells Nivea and Shamari and they feel that it's good that she spoke up. I'm like, I would have understood it if Aubrey had to try to pop her bra strap off, you know, take her bra off, pull the pants down, you know, slid her hand in her pants, filled up her breasts, you know, kissed her, done something to her to give her the sexual vibe that she made. I, that was all in Pam's head. That was in Pam's head. Pam, you still have those lesbian urges because you're what? You're still a lesbian. Girl, stop playing with me. You are still a whole-fledged, full-fledged lesbian. <laughs> I'm laughing because of Lisa Nicole from Married to Medicine. You guys remember when she and Kawhi got into it? What about your lesbian relationship, bitch? And she threw the water in her face. That's what I was thinking about. But Pam, girl, you are a lesbian. Own up to it. Admit it. It's okay. We still love you. 
girl, how am I on Keely's side of all people? Because I'm just like, Pam, you with these braids to the side, I mean, your whole aura, your whole everything just gives me lesbian and gives me stud that you use. Never mind. I'm not going to go that graphic. But yeah, you just give me stud. So, stud. Stud, S T U D, stud. I said. It. So then the ladies are trying to figure out. <laughs> they trying to figure out why Keely laid vocals on the track. I think this was Nivea and Shamari talking to her, and she was like, "Oh, I was just trying to lift the morale." You trying to do what? Do who? Lift whose morale? Keely don't know what she want to be and what she want to do. Keely is confused. Let's move. All right, you guys. This show is terribly good. It is messy. Oh, my God. I don't know how long this review is going to be. I know it's going to be a long one, but y'all will be here for it because we enjoying this show. So, the twins. Now, see, I don't know which twin is which. I don't know how to tell who Fallon is versus who Felicia is. So, we're just going to say the twins. That's what we're going to keep saying. So one of the twins is talking to Keely. And she's talking about Lamisha. And actually, it was Fallon. She's talking about Lamisha and Irish. Now, once again, we know that Irish and Lamisha, they ain't, you know, the bee's knees when it comes to the dancing. You know, we know they ain't the bee's knees when it comes to the singing. But I feel like when it comes with, with those two, what you could do is you could give them how do I, I mean I feel like when it comes down to it with you know with 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 um repetition that's what I'm trying to think of with repetition especially with the dance and with repetition they could get it because I mean we all know that like let's just talk about Destiny's Child once again we all know in Destiny's Child Beyonce and Kelly were the dancers Michelle was not a dancer but cohesively together they all looked good, except for when she fell on that stage at B at 106 and Park. What's up, BT? And they were walking, walking, bloop, and and uh, Kelly kept looking at her and went into her dance. <laughs> oh God, I rem my memory is amazing. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like with repetition, they can get it. Like. How many girl groups in the 90s and the 2000s did we see where they all danced, but you may have had one who was not the strongest dancer or one who's not the strongest singer? But they just want to nitpick. And I'm like, Keely, you of all people ain't got no room to talk. I'm getting a little tired of you, but can promise this, promise this. Like, Ooh, excuse me, y'all. Here's something when it comes to Keely. So. Last week, I was listening to some old songs from these from these groups that I love. So there's this one song by 3LW that I absolutely love. Mm-hmm. I Do. I think that's the name of the song. I Do featuring Loon. Here's the thing that I always had the question about with 3LW. Why was Keely the lead? Who, was it her mama that made her the lead? Because, girl, she can't sing. The best singer in that group was Naturi, followed by Adrian. And the only time that I really like Adrian singing, honestly, the Cheetah Girls. And there's one particular song that she sang on the Cheetah Girls. That, oh my God, it's my favorite song of all the Cheetah Girls songs. And it's called Strut. It's from Cheetah Girls too when they were in Barcelona. You've got to strut like you mean it. Free your mind is not enough. Yeah, I'm not going to give it to y'all. But yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. So, yeah. So, Fallon is talking about how Irish and Lamisha are starting to look like background singers. Okay. I mean, y'all are all not going to be leads. I hate to tell you that, little girl, but whatever. So, while they're talking about Irish and Lamisha, Lamisha overheard them. So, then Lamisha starts crying and she said that she wants to go home. I was like, oh, no. Don't let her make you want to go home. Here's another thing that I want to mention that I didn't mention. Did I mention this last week's episode? I think I did. 
or was it at, or did I look it up after? The ages. So Fallon and Felicia are young, are older than I am. I'm 31, about to be 32. They're 33 or 34. So y'all are closer to 40 than I am. But y'all want to talk about these older women. Miss me with that. So after hearing this, like I said, she's crying to the ladies. And now we got to. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Shamari, I know you mean well, my love. But girl, we got to stop lying to Lamisha and Irish. We got to stop lying to them about the talented part, baby. At this point in their life, the talent has slipped away. Can they get the talent back? Absolutely. But what we got to do is shame the devil and stop lying. I don't believe in that. We got to stop the lies, baby. We got to stop the lies. The talent has been sucked out of them. The devil has snatched that voice. The devil has snatched them dance moves. Maybe they weren't dancers. Who knows? But we got to stop lying about the talent part. We got to stop talking lying about them. So Pam has decided that she wants to call court. I'm like, oh, hell. Here we go with the boo. Here we go. This is going to turn into a whole bunch of mess. Let's move on. All right, you guys. So we hold it in court, right? So Lamisha, Lamisha bad about it, baby. Like she going to put it out there and say what it is. So she said, hey, I heard one of the twins talking. I heard the twins talking about me and Irish and how, you know, they don't feel that we are, um, I guess they feel like they're holding the group back or something like that. And Fallon was like, hold up. Or was it Felicia? Felicia, yeah, Felicia said, hold up. That wasn't me that said that shit. Like, don't put that on me. Little girl, calm down. But Fallon says, you know what, it was me. And she's talking about, you know, she's talking about what the girls are good at versus what the girls aren't good at. Girl, use a lie, and a lie don't care who tell it. The hell, you lying. Like you verbatim was talking about the fact that, that Lamisha and Irish can't sing and they can't dance. So what are they good at? This is a singing group. This is a, this is a singing group. This is going to be a dance. You know what? I just realized that this is going to be a whole full album. Girl, I don't see this album coming. I don't see this album making a light of day. I don't even see a single making a light of day. I don't even see an album cover making the light of day. I don't even see the concept art making the light of day. No. 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 But like I said, it's a group. They're singers, dancers. You're talking about what they're not good at. What are they gonna be what are they good at? It's a singing group. If they're not good at dancing and not good at singing, girl, what are they gonna do? Be in the crowd, be in the background, holding up signs to the audience to say cheer, you know, dance, do this. What they gonna do? Play the drums, play the piano. What they gonna do? What are they gonna do? I would really love to know the answer to that question, Fallon. Since you got, since you got so much mouth. You know, Fallon backtracked because she's scared of Lamisha. I just, I, I, I'm, I'm putting two and two together. You backtrack. So then Keely, mm. this is the Keely that I know and dislike. So she says, you know, the level of professionalism here is just very demoralizing. Huh? And then she addresses the twins, talking about Lamisha and Irish and how she was trying to defend them. I'm like, girl, again, what? A lie don't care who tell it. Girl, stop lying to them, me, and the, and the, view, the rest of the America. I'm like, girl, stop lying. So then, where we at? So then she flipped that from the twins on over to Miss Pam, calling Pam a homophobe. Do I think Pam is homophobic? You know what? No, Ooh. do I think Pam is homophobic? Do I think Pam is homophobic? Do I think Pam is homophobic? Like that's an actually that's actually a really good question. Do I think Pam is homophobic? 
I mean, just like, you know, you can have, um, do I think Pam is homophobic? Because you have black people that don't like other black people, and you got, you know, um, LGBT members that don't like their own community. So it's possible, but I don't think Pam is homophobic. I think Pam is one of those people who have suppressed her feelings. She is telling herself that she's no longer a lesbian when she still is a lesbian. But I don't think she was a homophobic, but homophobe. But we find out that um, Miss Keeley is bisexual, although she's married to a man. I'm like, girl, when did you come up with that one? But okay, I would have been Nivea the entire time. Nivea is an entire mood. I hope by the end of this season, we have a lot of Nivea gifts. Is that what it is? Gifts, gifs, G-I-F. How is that pronounced? Is it gifts or is it gifs? It looks like gifts. I say gifts. My best friend, she says gifs. What do you guys say? Let me know. So now I forgot to mention at one point, Keely told Nivea and somebody else that she doesn't want the girls to ask her, what is her purpose anymore? Well, girl, what is your purpose? And Felicia asked her, what is your purpose? You know, actually, I forgot to mention that. Was this when they were sitting? Nope. Yeah, this was when they were sitting down. She called her a bitch. She called her a two-faced bitch. <laughs> she called her a two-faced bitch. I was like, oh, my God. So then we see Aubrey. So Aubrey has done this vision board for the, what she envisions for the group. I was confused. I'm like, girl, didn't you just say that you wanted to work with the twins and potentially Shamari in the last episode? But now you've switched it and you want everyone to be uh, the super group. Okay, Aubrey, if you say so. So, Keith, oh, so this is where it is, where Keely told Misha that she's not answering why she's there anymore. Fine, girl, do you. Aubrey, girl, stop stuffing yourself in them clothes. So I represent her vision board to the ladies and she got the biggest, I mean, if looks could kill them looks that Keely was giving her, I'm like, girl, she is side eyeing you. She is stabbing you with daggers. She is killing you. So then she's being very sarcastic. I'm like, girl, at that point, I would have, I would have, if I was Aubrey, I would have slapped Keely. Keeping it real with you. If I was Aubrey, I would have slapped the hell out of Keely. So then they all get into it because once again, Keely is talking about she's not in a group. And they says, okay, well, if you're not in a group, then you need to stay out of the studio. You need to stop doing this. You need to stop doing that. Now, mind you, they all coming at her, right? And then I'll return her how she feels about her, right? Then in a, in a short second, they flip like a quarter. Then they start defending her. I was like, what in the hell just happened here? I was confused. I was like, oh my God, this is interesting. These people are good. Also good. But that's the episode, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about it. Leave your comments in the comment section below. And subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. Share this video. Um, stay safe, you guys. Take care of yourselves. Remember, wash your hands, wear your mask. If you just choose not to wear your mask, stay safe, you guys. Stay blessed. And I'll see you guys in the next one which um, will be Beverly Hills Housewives. Oh, God, we got a lot to talk about with that one. All right, you guys, I'll see you guys, and that'll be up tomorrow. I'm going to watch the episode tonight, and then we'll do it tomorrow. Bye-bye, guys.